I'm Mike from Goliath, and we're continuing our Getting Started series with a video on installing the Zephyr toolchain. This is what you need to compile projects for the hardware that you want to connect to Goliath. The instructions for it are all on the Goliath documents, docs.goliath.io, and I have it up here. You're probably already familiar with this because in a previous video, we went over the platform overview in the Getting Started Guide in order to set up your Goliath account, add a project, and provision a device for it. But if we want to run something on that device, we're going to need a tool chain. Today, I'm going to be installing the ESP32 tool chain. You can go ahead and read the overview if you're interested. And there is also a few notes on the quick start overview, but the guide really starts on this page for setting up Zephyr. And I'm going to be installing in Linux today. The first thing that we're going to do is update the app repository list. I think we're all up to date on there, which is great. And then we're going to install some of these dependencies. And it is going to have to download some of those. Now, one of the things that it's downloading right now is CMake. We have to be careful. I'm using a version of Ubuntu on here. And oftentimes Ubuntu has an older version of CMake on it. And so this next step is to check and see which version we have. So I have 3.16.3. The instructions tell us that we're going to need 2.0. And so I'm going to go ahead and install a package repository that will put a newer version on. That's definitely the easiest way. You can build this from source if you want to. That's not hard either, but it does take a little while. And this is just a little bit faster and easier. All right, so now I've added that repository. I'll update again, and I just need to go ahead and make sure that we install CMake. And this time when we run our version command, we're gonna see it coming back as 3.22.2, which hits our 3.20 or greater requirement that we have with Zephyr. Awesome. All right, so we continue on with our tutorial. This is an important thing to take note of is using a Python 3 virtual environment. It's nice because we're gonna be installing a bunch of uh, requirements for the Zephyr tool chain. If you're using a virtual environment, you know that they're kind of all packaged together and they work the way that you should. And uh, so we're gonna take that option. So let's first install Okay, what does it say here? The virtual environment was not created because ensure pip is not available. All right, so I think it's giving us an option here. to install the virtual environment package through the package manager. So I'm using that hint and I will try installing our virtual environment again. Perfect, all right, we've got that installed. Now this is an important step to keep track of activating the virtual environment because you're gonna wanna do this each time you go into a new console to do development. And so we just take this command, which is to source the virtual environment that we just created. And now you'll notice on my terminal here, it says dot venv on the left side. And that's how I know that I'm in the virtual environment, which is what we want. And uh, here's a note that I just reminded you to uh, reactivate your virtual environment whenever you need it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install West. One of the things that we wanna do first is just make sure that the package called wheel is installed. And there's sometimes uh, systems will give errors if you don't have that one. And then we'll tell pip to install West. So this is a Python tool. West is uh, what's known as a meta tool for Zephyr. It's the basically the command that we use when we want to use the build tools on Zephyr and a whole bunch of other things. All right, so now we're into installing the Zephyr F SDK. The first thing we're going to do is go to our home directory. You can install this anywhere you want, but just for ease of instructions, we're installing it as a subfolder in the home directory. And then this command is going to have West initialize itself in a directory called the Zephyr project, and it's going to pull in the Goliath SDK while it does it. Now, Goliath is built as a module for Zephyr. So this is putting everything where it needs to be in the module structure. 
Uh, the next thing that we want to do, we're going to go into that directory, Zephyr Project, off of the home directory, and we're going to do a West update. And that's going to pull in the repo from, from the Zephyr Project. Zephyr is a real-time operating system that's owned by the Linux Foundation. And uh, this is actually a pretty large repository, so it might take a little bit of time for it to come in. I think I'm going to put this full screen and I'll be back when we're ready for the next step. All right, so I think we have finished with that step and we can go ahead and move on to West Espressif Update. Now this is interesting because we haven't actually installed the Espressif tools yet, but we want to run the update in order to pull in the sub-modules the Espressif tools depend on. And again, this can take a little bit of time, so we will come back in just a moment. All right, so we completed that test. We're gonna go ahead and go down to Zephyr West Export, which sets up the CMake variables that we need. And with that step done, we can continue looking at our instructions. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that all of the Python uh, requirements or dependencies, I guess you might call them, are installed. And this doesn't take long, so I think I'll stay on screen for this part of it. There's always this error about Sphinx documentation, but it is not a breaker. So if you see that, just ignore that. All right. And now we are on to installing the actual compilers from Espressif and West, which I said before is a meta tool. It wraps this and takes care of it for us. And uh, I'm gonna let this install, be back in just a moment. That actually installed three different compilers from Espressif so that you can compile for the ESP32, the ESP32 S2, and the ESP32 C3. An important part to make note of is these hints at the end. These are tool chain paths that you need to set up in your shell every time you use a new console for development. And so I'm just gonna make sure that I copy each of these. Let's just copy them both at once. And now those are set up in, in this shell, which is what I need. And there is a note about this in the instructions as well that reminds you of how to get back to it. And that is the end of the toolchain install. We can actually do this sample build now. So it's telling us to go into the Zephyr Projects Zephyr directory. So this is uh, actually where Zephyr is installed. This is the Zephyr repository. And there are some samples here. I'm gonna use this sample. So I wanna call West, which is the meta tool I wanna to tell it to build a project. I need to give it the dash B, which is which board to build it for. We're gonna build it for the ESP32. And then I need to tell it where the code is that I want it to build. And so we're just gonna build a minimum minimal code. And then you'll notice in our directions, it says dash P. That stands for pristine build. If you had previously built a different project here, you'll get an error 
uh, because you're trying to reuse a build directory, the dash P will make sure you use a new build directory. In this case, it's optional, but I'm going to use it as uh, a way to point out the feature. And it doesn't take long to go through these builds. The nice thing is if you make small changes along your projects, if you don't use the dash P, you will just do incremental builds on the changes and it will not take as long to compile everything because it'll only compile the new parts. And you can see that we've completed. The next thing that we would go on to is flashing the microcontroller. And the nice thing is that we already built in all the tools that we needed to. And so flashing is actually really easy. West flash will do it, or you can actually specify the serial port if, if you want to, uh, but that's for another video. I think this uh, takes care of what we wanted to cover today. And uh, I wanted to thank you for viewing. We'll see you on the next one.